Hello everybody, SpiderPilot747 here, and it's uh, the middle of summer, and I was thinking, what can I do to cool off? Well, let's take a look at the compressed vapor refrigeration cycle. That's a pretty cool cycle there, so that ought to bring the temperature down. So we're looking at a refrigeration cycle here. So down here we have our low temperature reservoir, that's our Q-in, and that's going to be taking heat from the environment. So this is going to be mostly isobaric along here, and then once we get into a uh, superheated gas, it's going to go up a little bit to uh, 0.1 there. And then between 0.1 and 0.2, we have an isentropic compression. Then from 0.2 to 0.3, we're releasing heat back into the surroundings. So that's going to be our Q out. And then we have an isenthalpic expansion there through a throttling valve between 3 and 4, so that the enthalpy at 3 will be the same as the enthalpy at 4. So let's get right into analyzing this. What we need to do is we need to define some of the properties along this, uh, along this cycle here. So at point 1, the pressure is going to be 80 kilopascals. The temperature, we're going to say, is negative 10 degrees centigrade. And that's just uh, basically taking data from the environment. So we're going to be saying that this room is maybe negative 5 degrees centigrade and uh, when we absorb heat from the surroundings we absorb until we get to about negative 10 and then we also should define what the other properties of point 1 are so we'll do that down here actually so point 1 we know the pressure P 1 equals 80 kilopascals T 1 equals negative 10 degrees centigrade so we can go into the gas vapor property table. We can go to the uh, property tables for refrigerant 134A. The tables I'm using are from Cambridge. I'll we'll post the uh, link in the description below. But uh, basically what we have here, we have a pressure, we have a temperature, and we want to get some of the values such as the enthalpy and the entropy. So the enthalpy, if we look up on the table at 80 kilopascals and negative 10 degrees centigrade, we're seeing 248.1 kilojoules per kilogram. And for the entropy, we're looking at something like 1.023 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, which defines our point 1. And I'll put subscripts on these. Now the interesting part is we can now figure out everything for point two. So point two, basically we're told that point two, the pressure is going to be 1200 kilopascals, and that's an isobaric heat exchange with the environment uh, from two to three. So at 1200 kilopascals, we've got P2 equals 1200 kPa. Now what about T2? What do we know otherwise from the pressure of point 0.2? Well, we know the pressure of point 0.2 is 1,200. The only other thing that we know about point 0.2 is that it's an isobaric process after an isentropic compression, and the isentropic compression was at an entropy S1 equals 1.023 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Therefore, since we know the pressure and the entropy we can just look up in that uh, superheated properties for refrigerant 134A and get the uh, basically the exact value for the entropy. And we're going to be taking an approximation here. T2 is approximately 80 degrees centigrade. The entropy H2 is approximately 311.4 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's from the isentropic compression. Now we have a isobaric heat exchange with the environment or the surroundings, and we know that that's going to a temperature at 3, which we're going to say is 45 degrees centigrade. The outside temperature, uh, the outside temperature is 42 degrees centigrade right now, so 45 degrees centigrade pretty much cools that gas off most of the way to the uh, equilibrium temperature with the surroundings. So let's look at uh, point 3 now. Again, that temperature at 3 would most likely be given in a uh, problem description there, or might be uh, something that you're designing and you would uh, know what sort of temperature you want to have at point 3. So looking at point 3, our pressure is going to be the same. P3 equals 1200 
kPa, and our temperature T3, 45 degrees centigrade. So we look at the property tables. Looking at the property tables here for refrigerant 134, we're seeing that at 1200, 1200 kilopascals, the fluid temperature for refrigerant 134 is going to be 46, 46 decimal 29 degrees centigrade. So this is actually a compressed liquid at this point. It's um, no longer at the point where it is uh, having any vapor above it. It's uh, compressed liquid at 45 degrees. So the value for the enthalpy we're actually going to be getting from the temperature table here at 45 degrees centigrade as a compressed liquid. So the HF at 45 degrees centigrade equals 115 decimal 82 kilojoules per kilogram. And now from point 3 to point 4, it's an isenthalpic expansion through a throttling valve. So H4 equals H3 equals 115.82 kilojoules per kilogram. And if we want to figure out what the temperature at point 4 is going to be, we know that this is 80 kilopascals, and we know that the uh, enthalpy HF at 80 kilopascals, HF equals 11.2. And HG, the gaseous version, or the gaseous enthalpy, that is going to be 231.47. So this is um, kind of halfway between being liquid and gas. And we can, of course, figure out what the ratio of that would be based on this uh, based on this enthalpy here. All right, this is uh, me from the future here. Basically, I was looking at the uh, solution I did there, and I noticed that um, the vapor quality that I calculated here was done incorrectly. So I've done this as a little aside to kind of explain how you would actually get the vapor quality for this uh, refrigeration cycle. So we know what our enthalpy is at this point. We know this H. We know what the liquid enthalpy would be if it was 100% liquid, and what the enthalpy would be if it was 100% gaseous. So basically, what we have is we have some enthalpy for liquid, HL, plus some enthalpy for gas, HG, and that's going to be equal to the enthalpy of the liquid, H. Now, you notice I'm using capitals here, that's because this is dependent on mass. So, M liquid times enthalpy liquid, the specific enthalpy for the liquid, plus the mass that is gaseous times the enthalpy for gaseous at 80 kilopascals equals the total mass times the actual enthalpy that we have there. This is just a simple balance here. The total mass has to be equal and uh, the mass fraction of gas and mass fraction of liquid those should add up to give the same energy on both sides of the equation. So what is ML equals M total minus M gaseous. And we're also going to define here our vapor quality X is going to be equal to the mass of the gaseous refrigerant 134 divided by the total mass MT. And that's going to be our quality. So let's substitute these into the equation here. We have mt minus mg times hl plus mghg equals m total times enthalpy. So now we're going to divide by m total. We get 1 minus mg over mt liquid enthalpy plus mg over mt gaseous enthalpy equals h. 1 minus quality times liquid enthalpy plus quality times gaseous enthalpy equals the total specific enthalpy. So now we just calculate x. We have uh, 
HL minus XHL plus XHG equals H. Or in other words, X times HG minus HL equals H minus HL. So basically, our quality X equals 0 0.475. So basically, about 50%. or close to 50% is going to be gaseous. So this is basically the mass fraction that is a gaseous refrigerant 134A. So close to 50% is going to be gaseous. And I just wanted to do this as an aside to kind of show you where the actual quality that we're calculating here, the vapor quality, uh, where we're getting that number from. And since this is uh, not a compressed liquid or a superheated gas, we also know that this is going to be temperature for the saturated region, which is negative 31.13 degrees centigrade. T1 was equal to negative 10 degrees centigrade. We know that T2 approximately 80 degrees centigrade. We were given that T3 was equal to 45 degrees centigrade and we know that T4 is equal to negative 31.13 degrees centigrade and more importantly we know the enthalpy the you know the enthalpy is associated with this so what we can do now is we can determine the performance measures of the system so how much heat are we removing so our Qn is going to be H1 minus H4. In other words, the change in enthalpy from 0.4 to 0.1. That is going to be the heat that we're removing from the system, which is equal to 132.28 kilojoules per kilogram. So say, for example, we're sizing this system to cool off um, an AMD graphics card. Those get pretty hot. So we'll say it's uh, generating about 300 watts of heat. If we want to remove 300 watts of heat from a system, what sort of mass flow should we have for the refrigerant in this system? Well, we have 132.28, so that's 132.280 joules per kilogram, and we're going to be dividing that by 300 watts. 300 joules per second, and this is going to be 1 over m dot, which is your mass flow rate of the 130 refrigerant 134. So what we'll find is that M dot for refrigerant 134 A is going to be 300 divided by 132 280. In other words, to cool off that uh, graphics card there, you're going to need a flow rate of about 2.27 grams per second of refrigerant 134 A. So 2.27 grams per second is going to be your flow rate. So, so to cool off a 300 watt part, we're looking at 2.27 grams per second for the flow rate of the refrigerant in the system. So that's a reasonable flow rate right there. But what sort of efficiency do we get? Well, for any heat pump or refrigeration system, we measure that by the coefficient of performance. So the coefficient of performance is just a measure of the refrigeration system's performance. And usually that's between 2 to 4. And basically, for the coefficient of performance, the formula would be what you want divided by what you have to give up. Which in this case, what we want is we want Q in. And what we have to give up is a net work. We know that net work is equal to Q out minus Q in for a closed thermodynamic cycle. Therefore, this is going to be equal to H2 minus H3 minus Q in equals 195.58 kilojoules per kilogram minus 132.280 kilojoules per kilogram, which is 63. 0.3 kilojoules per kilogram. Now if we go back up here 
where we had calculated a mass flow rate for the fluid to cool off a 300 watt part. We can also calculate how much work we have to put into the system. So 63.3 kilojoules per kilogram times that, uh, what was it, 2.27 grams per second times 1 over 1,000 kilograms per gram. So the net work that we need to put into the system to cool it off would be around um, 143.69 watts. So to cool off a 300 watt system we need to use about 143.69 watts of net work. So back to the coefficient of performance here. Our coefficient of performance here is going to be that 132.28 which is our Q out, divided by the 63.3 kilojoules per kilogram, which gives us about 2.09. So basically our coefficient of performance is right borderline at that lower end of uh, what we would want to see for our coefficient of performance there. It is between 2 and 4, but it's a little bit on the low end there at uh, 2.09. But basically, what we found here is that 300 watt part, uh, to cool off a 300 watt part, we need to have about 2.27 grams per second of R134A flow. To remove 300 watts of heat from the system, we have to provide about 143.69 watts to the system of work to accomplish this. And our coefficient of performance will be around 2.09, and there's no units on that one. But 2.09 is going to be relatively low performance, but given the extreme differences in temperature in this uh, particular system, uh, that does actually seem a little bit reasonable. So ultimately, the equilibrium temperature of the system for the actual part that we're cooling there, we won't be able to determine that from this system. We can only say that we will have this much heat removed uh, when we can provide the full 300 watts of cooling. Uh, of course, the actual rate at which it is cooled, once you get to 300 watts, the equilibrium temperature of the part that we're cooling is going to be dependent on the heat transfer coefficients between the part and the uh, heat exchanger where we're getting our Q in. So we can't specifically say what the temperature will be. We need to know more about the system. But we can say that a system such as this, 143.69 watts of net work is going to be required to remove 300 watts of heat and uh, depending on our heat exchange system, if we need to have it uh, lower temperature, we might need to actually scale that a little bit. Anyway, this is a refrigeration cycle, a compressed vapor refrigeration cycle. I'm Spider Pilot 747 and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm going to put a link as well to the property table for Refrigerant 134A that I used in this episode in the comments section in the comments for this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.